All right, so let me stop this software quick. Let me just stop this and we'll discuss an example. So let's say, let's say you've got a coffee kettle and you want to measure the temperature there. Maybe you want to control it for some reason. Then uh, these coffee kettles normally take about two minutes to boil. So let me just get my pen here. So let's say we might start at let's say 19 degrees, the water might be 90 degrees Celsius and then it's going to slowly go up as we put on the power up until, depends on where you live, let's say 96 degrees Celsius, 19 degrees Celsius. So it's slowly going to go up to 19 degrees Celsius. If we switch it off again, it's slowly going to cool down again to maybe 19 degrees Celsius. And what you should see now is we've got some sort of sine wave arriving here or some, can you see it looks like a sine wave? And most things in nature work like this, but let's see, this might take two minutes. And two minutes, as we know, is 120 seconds. Let's just check that quick. Calculator. So if we have 60 seconds in a minute times two, see it's 120 seconds. Now, if you remember back from school, it means we've got one cycle. Now if you look here, this is half a cycle. Normally in sine wave, can you see normally a sine wave would look something like this. So it's going up, going down, going up again. Yeah, we can just see it's just the upward spiral. So if we switch it on again, it will do a, a downward spiral again. If this machine will go on and off and on and off, for instance, we can see that it, it will make a sine wave. It will look something like this. And this speed of which it's changing, is the frequency. So we can see it's heating up, it's cooling down, we can heat it up, it's cooling down again. So this is the frequency of this percolator switching on and off all the time. 120 seconds. Now if you remember from your school maths, frequency is 1 over t, which is your period. You can see that 120 is my period, so if I say 1 over 120, I should be able to get the frequency. So I say 1 divide by 120 and can you see we've got a, a very low frequency of 0 0.008 roughly so this frequency is very low very slow and it's not even the slowest frequency we get if we look at maybe day and night temperature maybe at daytime let's say in the morning at eight o'clock if it's the morning at 8, we are maybe at 6 degrees Celsius, depending on winter or summer. And then the temperature will slowly rise up until maybe 12 o'clock. And at 12 o'clock, it might be 27 degrees Celsius. And then as it goes dark again tonight, it's going to go down again. Tomorrow morning, the sun will come up again. We can see that there's also a frequency. And that's even slower because that is a 24-hour frequency. It's a change in 24 hours. Now in factories, things work a little bit faster. So first we may be going to start with the kettle example, temperature example. But because this is going to take two minutes for us to really see an answer, we're going to speed it up a bit. Um, so let's start with a new example. Let's say some machine in a factory is a little bit faster. So let's just draw, there's a machine. And then out of that machine comes sensor wires. So out of the machine, whatever the machine is, it's got a temperature sensor on it. We've got a ground pin. And on this side, we measure the temperature. And then this temperature might be based on, let's say, LM35 sensor. LM35 means if it's, for instance, 40 degrees Celsius, it's going to give you 0 0.4 volts. If it's 100 degrees Celsius, it's going to give you 1 volt. If it's 20 degrees Celsius, it's going to give you 0, 0,2 volt. Do you start to see a relationship here? Can you see that if I say something like 0, 0,3 volts, how many degrees Celsius is it? You can see your brain will automatically say, oh, if this was 20 and that was 100, then this would have been equal to 30 degrees Celsius. Back to school maths. This sensor is kind of linear, measuring temperature is kind of linear. So 
what do you see back in school maths your brain does so, did this automatically but really what you did was y equals mx sorry let me just woo my handwriting let's try again y equals mx plus c because it's linear y equals mx plus c and if we really have to do it correctly we say y of x equals mx plus c and you can solve for y we can say there if this is 20 degrees we know that we don't know what m is we know we measured 0 0.2 volts plus c still remember this from school we can calculate what m is so m would be times 100 so we can solve m c is 0 because 0 was 0 still remember this from school so this is actually the mathematical formula that your brain just did automatically so we're going to do a lot of school maths here in this example um, so most of the maths in, is school maths as i say now the difference between school maths and, and let's say university maths is in school it was actually more difficult because you did the maths but you didn't know why when you start being an engineer and you're working with maths the maths becomes easier because you can see why did you do the school math examples so back to my example yeah let's say this is my machine in the factory this machine changes every let's say it's changing at two hertz meaning there's a change every two seconds in temperature it goes from zero to 40 to zero to 40 it does this in two seconds sorry two seconds and one over two seconds will give us two hertz see one divided by two two hertz so what's going to happen we're going to measure from 0 to 40 every with at 2 hertz we know that's the change of it and when we measure it remember that example we are thinking we're going to get something like this but it actually looks a little bit noisy so we're going to solve the noise issue as well in this example do you understand the concept do you understand the example if you don't start the video again see if you do get it in short we're measuring temperature you're using the LM35 sensor this machine in the factory goes from 0 to 40 back to 0 to 40 and it does this a full cycle does a full cycle once every two seconds so one over the period one over the period will give us two hertz so now I'm going to start with this information we're going to start with some basic uh, signal processing ideas of concept.